And then there are friends who are in the audience who work with us every day, Aisha Mason and Callie Wright, who are members of the American Friends Service Committee and together with Dr. Kiroga and the Program on Torture Victims are working to pass a Senate resolution against physicians and health professionals participating in torture. You think that would be an easy feat, but there is much opposition. And many of you have written letters and we're gonna call on you for more support. Uh, there's Jane Williams um, and her son Cade. I've seen, um, I've worked with Jane for many years and I've seen, uh, and there's Cade. Uh, one of the reasons we do this work is for his generation so that we actually leave him a better place than what we found. Uh, we're, we serve together on the California Environmental Justice Advisory Committee on Climate Change. And uh, it's a very interesting thing where we're fighting to make sure that climate change policies are also fair to low-income communities where many of the pollutants that are producing carbon and other pollutants are located. Again, not an easy thing and we're going to need your help. My dear and lovely friends, all of you from the Healthy Homes Collaborative, from Nancy to Jorge to Montserrat, who are all working with us to make housing safer so that living in substandard housing is not a health hazard for children and their families. Bennett Rambert, who works with us on the monthly global security dinners at UCLA, which we co-sponsor for the Center for Defense Information. Uh, uh, they're sort of like political salons. They're quite interesting. If you haven't been to one, you should attend. They're, they're very interesting. Uh, and I, I might have missed a few others, but I can't see you with the light, um, <laughs> so I'm sorry. Uh, we're also really pleased tonight to have with us six of the Robert Wood Johnson Clinical Scholars from UCLA. And we look forward to the opportunity to get to know you tonight, but get to, to also get a chance to meet with you um, after the dinner, and to find ways that we can work together to create policy change that will help make. Actually, it is not the NRDCs of the world. It's the Physicians for Social Responsibilities of the world. If you notice when I introduce my buddies that I work with on a day-to-day -day basis, American friends, C California Communities Against Toxics, Communities for a Better Environment, all groups who do grassroots organizing. We understand that it's movement building that is gonna change. We also understand that to build a broad-based movement that will deal with issues of justice and poverty and climate change and environmental toxins, the fact that 80% of men in jail have learning disabilities and that we are still exposing children to lead and reproductive toxins and developmental toxins. Our work lies at those intersections. Our work really fundamentally is about breaking those silos. And what's really wonderful about the California Endowment is that they're actually funding that kind of movement building. If we look back on the broad social movements like the Civil Rights Movement, Rosa Parks didn't just decide one day she was tired and was gonna sit down. She was trained at the Highlander Center. She was an organizer. We have to do the same kind of leaping of creeping, of organizing slowly before we make that leap to a broad social movement of change. The way the right has done it, we have been spending time in our communities organizing, understanding the interconnectedness of these issues. And I'm proud to work at PSR that we won't compromise on social justice issues like many other groups do because we understand that you just can't fight for a few, that it's about going to root causes that will make real change over a long period of time. And so we work with promotoras like Montserrat, who started at, at Esperanza as being trained as a community health promoter and is now an organizer. We understand that we need to make those partnerships to bring that credible voice of physicians to bear on these broad, very important social movements. And we do that with your support because most foundations will not fund that work. We cannot do that without your support. We cannot do that work that is vital to actually making the kind of world, certainly that my parents came to this country believing was, existed here. And I've spent my entire life, since I was 15 years old, being an organizer. I'm part of that progressive movement of Los Angeles. You know, I've worked with Karen Bass, we've worked with those organizations, and that's what's really exciting about being here, is that I have an opportunity to tie all those threads together with a great staff, with great volunteers, and incredible community partners. So I, I thank you for all your support. And I'm gonna be quiet now so we can all have dinner, and we'll be back with the rest of our program. Thank you. We'll also be talking to you about, but last year many of our members helped persuade Congress to deny funding to um, the reliable replacement warhead. 
But however, the Bush administration has proposed a new plan to overhaul the U.S. nuclear weapons complex. This plan, called Complex Transformation, includes building a new bomb plant that would enable the mass production of nuclear weapons for the first time in two decades. PSR staff and our members will be providing testimony against this complex transformation at, up, at an upcoming Department of Energy hearings across the country. Our country is also facing a dangerous showdown with Iran. PSR is working to promote a direct diplomatic solution. Congresswoman Barbara Lee has introduced uh, House Resolution 5056, the Iran Diplomatic Accountability Act of 2008. Our ho I hope many of you as our PSR members will be coming with us to do in-district visits to local representatives in the months to come to engage them in support of this resolution. If you're interested in this work, please see Denise Duffield in the back who will uh, find ways to engage you in our visits to the, to, to the congressional delegations. We'll also be holding media trainings for physicians so you can become better advocates, understanding how to talk to the media, understanding how to talk to politicians and others about key issues that we care about. And we'll be sending you email updates about those upcoming trainings. And now, I want to introduce you to someone who gives me hope for the future of our own organization and the role of physician advocacy. Tova Fuller is currently a dual degree MD, PhD student uh, at UCLA, obtaining her PhD in computational genetics. So she's scary smart and wonderful and has uh, great energy. And she was my first Facebook buddy. So she's teaching an old dog new tricks about organizing in the information age. Um, and she's uh, a member of our board as well as our national. So Tova. Thank you, Martha. Um, I first wanted to call attention to Caleb Brown. He's in the back. Caleb, could you please stand? Caleb is the student representative for student PSR at University of Southern California, and his entire table is filled with students from USC. So um, I know that we're running late, but I'd like to tell you a little bit about the exciting things that we're doing at Student PSR National. Um, first and foremost, we have something called the Medical Alliance to Stop Global Warming. This is a coalition with AMSA, which is the largest um, medical student group in the United States. And what we're doing is trying to raise awareness to the mortality and morbidity that is ongoing and will continue to be a problem in the future due to climate change. Uh, if you are a health professional or student, in the, health, in the health sciences of any flavor, psychology, nursing, dentistry, medicine, I'd urge you, we have something called the call to action. It's on the table in the back of the room. Before you leave, please sign it. We're going to be delivering this in April to key members of Congress as well as to the presidential candidates. Um, and this will be on our effort to raise awareness that we need to have stronger emissions regulations. Um, the Medical Alliance to Stop Global Warming will be speaking next month in two different areas at the pre-conference to AMSA's conference in Houston. This is a national event. Um, the pre-con is a full day event of environmental health training. And also I and four other medical students from the United States will be traveling to Delhi, India to the, I can't remember if it's the 17th or 18th uh, annual IPPNW conference. For those who don't know, IPPNW is our international affiliate. So um, there's that work.